Welcome to Specific Lab. Today I'm going to show you how I built this awesome drill holding station. It has plenty of room for your chargers, batteries, and much more. Let's begin. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is measure out my PVC pipe. I need to know roughly how long we're going to need for these drills. About 10 inches should do. So, and you cut these down and make that to the right length. Now also, I need to measure the width right here. Now a little trick for that is to take just your standard clamp and you want to put it right around there finding the max width. You may have to adjust it a few times to get it to fit. According to this, about an inch and three eighths or an inch and a half. To make this quick and easy, I clamped up a stop block so I know it will always hit at the 10 inch mark. I'm going to use a Forstner bit to cut this and I want to mark roughly where I want to put this. I'm using only an inch and a quarter bit because I don't want to make the hole too big. I can always go back and make it a little bit larger, but I can't make it smaller. Now to help control the bit when you're drilling, it's always good to make a little divot right where you want to drill. Now I'm going to use my drill press to drill this, but to hold it in place, I just very simply have a couple pieces of wood with a V cut. You can cut this into a single piece of wood, or in my case I have two 45 degree cuts and they're screwed in to some additional supports below. And that will help hold the pipe right where you want it. If the piece still wants to move around a lot, you can always throw some tape around it to give it some extra rigidity. But you do have to be careful of it locking up on you. If by chance it does get really, really tight on there, it can lock up on the pipe. So you gotta be very careful that doesn't hurt you in the process. Now I need to mark off the area that I need to cut out. And so to do that, I'm gonna take my speed square, I'll line it over here along this flat edge, line it up with the edge of this cut. Make the mark, do the same thing on the opposite side. Now I'm going to take a jigsaw. I have a metal cutting blade on here because it has fine teeth and should cut through this plastic easier. And we're going to cut these lines out. Now I'm going to move over to cutting out the back and the bottom for this setup. And to do that, I'm just using some scrap plywood I had left over from another project. It's roughly three quarter inch. I'm gonna square everything up on my table saw and then cut it out. I need a 24 by 12 and a 24 by 16. Now I'm not sure if you saw that, but I came very close to getting hurt on the table saw because I did not do something first. I forgot to put my little divider, or splitter, riving knife, whatever you want to call it here, to keep the kit back from happening. And I was very fortunate because, if you look right here, it grabbed onto the board and tried to kick it back on me. Fortunately, very fortunately, I was able to keep that from happening. Otherwise, I could have been hurt severely. So make sure you always use the right tools on your table saw. While at the table saw, I also cut two smaller shelves and the sides, which start out as 18 by 12 inch rectangles. All right, now that we have the sides cut out, I'm gonna measure in two inches, just roughly, this doesn't have to be perfect, but you just wanna get it close. And two inches, you want to go in two inches, and also on this side over here. Then you're gonna make sure you use the straight edge so you can connect these lines where everything meets. Then you want to draw the diagonal between these two. Then down here in this corner, you want to mark, I should have done a second ago, but we're going to remark this two inch right there. And back in here in this corner over here, we're going to do the same. Now we're going to take a circular saw and we're going to cut along this line here to remove all this. Now that I have all the lines drawn, I need to cut out this inner shape. 
To do that, I was planning to use the jigsaw. Now to get the blade in it, I do have to drill a hole, and this is a 3 8 but I'm gonna use a pilot hole in each of these corners first, and then use the 3 8 bit so that I have somewhat of a round corner, which will allow it to have a little more strength than a straight edge. Now I'm just using some scrap lumber here to hold this up so you get an idea of what the shelves will look like. Now I'm going to use some pocket screws to hold these together, so let's start drilling. These corners could cause injuries in the future, so I used a miter saw to cut them at a 45 degree angle. I then gave all of the pieces a light sanding, followed by a light coating of cherry stain. Now in the process of staining all the wood, I decided to leave the back just a natural wood. I like the two contrasting colors so that as everything is assembled, it'll be easy to see that everything contrasts against the back, especially the cutouts. So let's put this thing together. Now in a lot of cases, when you're putting together a box type shape, you want to do the main sections to create that cube. But in this case, because I'm gonna have shelves and I'm using pocket screws, I'm going to have to attach the sides first and then attach the top shelf, the middle shelf, and then the bottom. Otherwise, I might not be able to get to all the screws. I then measured out the location for the screws on the PVC and drilled a hole for easy attachment. Now to keep these from hitting the wall in the back once everything is installed, I'm gonna I have a little shim here. It's probably about an eighth of an inch. We're going to raise these up and slide this shim underneath so that it gives a little added clearance. Now as you're installing these, you need to make sure there's a little bit of a gap in between each of them so that as you slide the drills in, they don't hit each other with the batteries and cause others to fall out when you're grabbing one. Now to hold this up on the wall, I'm gonna be using French cleats to attach to my French cleat wall, but I'm not gonna use just one. I'm gonna actually use two braces because this is gonna have a good bit of weight and you wanna make sure it's secure. To get the best location for the bottom cleat, I placed it on a wall and positioned the holder on top of it. I then tapped in a couple small nails so that it would stay in place. I then took it off the wall and added a few screws. Now this is an awesome project, but do keep in mind this is a heavy item and you don't want kids to be playing around and trying to lift it off the wall. I also have some other projects right over here that you should like, so make sure you check those out. Otherwise, have fun building!